What a wonderful day today, sunny, warm, and lively. My name is Anna Nuvais. I am the Executive Director of Health at the Department of Health. And it's truly, truly my pleasure to welcome all of you here. I couldn't think of a better way to start today with the African drums. It took me right back home and made me want to do a happy dance in my place. I hope you guys enjoyed as much as I did. And I want to thank them for really pumping us up for the day. Because we have a long day ahead of us. We have lots of work to do. Uh, I want to also welcome all of those who are joining us uh, live stream at the Department of Health. Can you believe we had, we opened this um, the event, we sent a save the date, we opened registration and within a week we were sold out. In fact, more than sold out. We went back to the hotel and asked for more space because we had so many fo uh, folks asking us to attend and participate. While that is great, it tells us of the importance of the day, it tells us of how much work is still need to be done. I also want to welcome all of those who are joining us via Pub Latino Public Radio with Pablo Rodriguez. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez, for once again bringing life to the Hispanic com community. Bienvenidos a todos los que nos escuchan via uh, Latino Public Radio. Dr. Pablo Rodriguez was with us six years ago when we had the New England Regional Conference, and he also did the Strime Live Life uh, Conference. So thank you for once again committing to support public health and bring uh, such important messages to the Latino community. Hopefully, in a few years, we will also have other radios reaching other uh, minority groups. Uh, without any further ado, let me get to the logistics because I do have orders to follow, even knowing that I'm not very good at doing that. Uh, but uh, I want to remind everyone that um, our Department of Health staff, they have orange stickers in their name badges. Those are the folks that you can look up for help. Uh, any questions, uh, any issues, ask them. They will be able to help you. Uh, we are going to be filming and taking ph photographies today. So uh, if you have any concerns, let us know ahead of time. Uh, speak up or then don't say anything for the rest of the day about that. Uh, in addition, we also have uh, we have a really, really packed agenda, and we're going to try to get very quick through these in-between conversations so we can really get to listen to the folks that are the important folks today that you want to listen to and you want to hear and you want to learn from. Um, we have also lots of resources in your folder. Uh, we have minority health fact sheets that we, fact, um, we have outside. And those are an update of our minority health fact sheets. April was National Minority Health Month. We celebrated and we uh, highlighted things that happen within the minority community. So look at those fact sheets. It's new data. We have some posters in the foyer. That's our uh, health equity zones and centers for health equity and wellness projects. That has been our engagement at the local level. Take the time to look at those, to speak to those folks and learn more about it. And uh, we're going to be launching uh, today our Community Connections Rhode Island, which is really a, a tool for everyone working in our communities to connect, to, to learn what uh, other folks are doing, and uh, learn about resources, what we have going on in our state. The West African drummers, the CD Maiga group, they were really awesome. They come from Mali. Uh, that's in the, in the West Africa. And, uh, I come from Africa myself, and so it was a, a going back home for me, and I really, really appreciate it. But today, my first job, without uh, just the logistics, is to also introduce our first speaker, the first official welcome. And it's really someone who does not need an introduction, but I will do that anyway. Uh, I have the pleasure today to introduce Secretary Elizabeth Roberts. We all know Secretary Elizabeth Roberts for so, so many years, for her commitment to public health, for her work as a Senate. Uh, she was recognized, in fact, back in 2006 by Common Cause as one of her top two senators of the year. But today, she's really been known by her ongoing and uh, 
sustained commitment to public health and to health reform initiatives in our state. Outside of being Rhode Island's first female lieutenant governor, the long-time advocacy for affordable health care, that is really, really what makes her known. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Secretary Roberts. Great to see Pablo this morning and to be, uh, have Latino Public Radio here, to the people back at the health department, and to so many people here today. Um, this couldn't, from my perspective, um, this is an incredibly important event and a very timely event. Um, I think for many of us, and I won't speak now as somebody who has um, a role in state government, but just as a person living in our country, um, this is a time when we are being reminded about our failures, I think, uh, in creating a society that um, respects, uh, connects, works for everyone in it. And I, I sometimes like to think, I'm, I'm 58 years old, I grew up in a state that was segregated when I was born in it, uh, and I like to think, wow, we have come a long way. And then there are times when I realize how much further we have to go, and that we have opportunities um, in some of the most important issues, economic opportunity, education, and today we're here to talk about health, a fundamental right to anyone born on this entire planet, and certainly anyone born in this country. So I really am delighted that this whole day is sold out, that we are bringing some people from outside Rhode Island to share their expertise and ideas with us, and that we are also talking amongst ourselves about how to change our own community. Because um, we have significant issues to deal with, and I'm hoping those will be highlighted today. I'm delighted that when I finish, I'm gonna get to introduce the Director of Health designee, Nicole Alexander Scott, for whom this is a major focus as she takes on her new responsibility. You know, when you think about things like diabetes, where you might see a, a rate twice as high um, based on whether you were born into the African-American community or into the white community in Rhode Island. Think about it, you know. In my house where I live, I'm probably a quarter of a mile from um, what would be a, definitely is a majority minority part of our state. Um, and I happen to be, have a significantly different expectation of my health. That should not be the case. And how do we make a difference? We have been working hard around how Medicaid needs to change. And lately we've been talking more about how to drive that change or the quality and a focus on the state budget. But this morning I came from a meeting where we started to talk about, okay, what is our plan going forward? How are we gonna change our systems of care to drive improved health? How do we move away from a system where we pay for volume of services and instead pay for outcomes, pay for um, improved health status in our community? And how do we make sure we're recognizing that as important as paying for medical services is, that so much of what drives health is really about what happens outside of a hospital or a doctor's office. It's about our, our neighborhoods, it's about the quality of our housing, it's about safety in our communities, it's about health literacy, it's about um, something you're gonna hear more and more about, which is kind of patient engagement, consumer engagement. How do we give people the tools and the community support to drive their own improved health? And we in Medicaid need to be a part of that. Because we pay for, think about this, a quarter of Rhode Island's population is supported through services financed through our Medicaid program. More than 250,000 people. And a lot of the people that we are talking about today, people who have traditionally not benefited from improved health in our country and in our state are the people that we serve and how do we serve them better. So it's really an exciting time. We're looking at things like community health teams, things based in the community that will help us do our jobs better. And we are looking for the expertise in this room and the people listening outside of this room to help us improve what we do so that we drive change fundamental change in health in our community. So I'm delighted that Nicole Alexander Scott has joined Governor Raimondo's administration. She brings expertise and a vision with her that is going to be very important, not only, well, certainly for the issues that are being talked about today, but also more broadly, um, I, I am a big believer in public health. And I, I think about some of the simple things that we often overlook. I have a mother who had polio as a child. 
And I think about the importance of some of the things that we too often take for granted and therefore underfund, um, and how we need to make sure that the basics in our community are supported, that we make sure that all of our providers are meeting their very best standards, but that we have safe and um, healthy communities to live in. So Nicole, I am delighted to welcome you up. You can now go through this complicated uh, switch here. And to everyone here, please, one of the most important messages I send to you is what comes out of today needs to be connected in more broadly to the work that we're doing around healthcare reform. Because if we're just changing our systems of care and how we pay for them, we will not fundamentally alter the health of our community. And that needs to be our ultimate goal. Thank you. For this Health Equity Summit, it is actually perfect timing um, for me to be able to share some of the strategic priorities that we are developing as a Department of Health that fully supports and engages in and advocates for what we are discussing today. Health equity as a concept is extremely important. I enjoy speaking of it as if it is a right, because it is. And I appreciate that Secretary Roberts said that this is something that is important to people throughout the world and certainly in the United States and in Rhode Island as well. Health equity refers to the opportunity to access to healthy um, insurance, to a healthy life, to living in a healthy neighborhood, to having access to healthy foods, every aspect of life that everyone should have an equal opportunity to access and enjoy so that we all have the opportunity to live a full, healthy life. That's what I understand when we discuss health equity. And that's something that I know intrinsically we all feel is important. So what better way than to acknowledge that and to advocate for that in our summit today? So I'm going to start with sharing some of the strategic priorities that we are establishing as a department. I've had the honor to be in this role since April 1st. I could not imagine a more amazing team in the Department of Health to work with in this process, as well as my colleagues within Governor Raimondo's administration. I'm thrilled to take on this role and to work with you to achieve some of these goals, as well as many others, to get us towards health equity for Rhode Island. Our overarching goal as a department is to continue doing what we've been doing and strengthen that even more. We want to positively demonstrate for Rhode Islanders, not just talk about it, but show you in the actions that we're doing, the purpose and the importance of public health, as Secretary Roberts mentioned, so that we don't take it for granted, so that we understand that the clean air that we breathe, the, the clean water that we drink, uh, the laboratory tests that we have access to as a state, um, a lot of the educational services and the community supports that go on, the vaccinations that we have access to, are all a component of public health and all must be supported. We don't want to deal with situations where we take that for granted and we forget it and we don't fund it appropriately and then suffer the consequences. We have an opportunity as a state to push ourselves forward and to acknowledge the amazing things that Rhode Island has done and can do even better. These are our strategic priorities. It serves as a framework for which we are streamlining and determining the, the direction that we'd like to go as a department in collaboration with our state agencies and all of you as our partners. First, we want to address the social and environmental determinants of health in Rhode Island. Second, we want to eliminate the disparities of health in Rhode Island and promote health equity. And third, we want to ensure access to quality health services for Rhode Islanders, including our vulnerable populations. That's also a concept of health equity. A cross-cutting strategy that we are developing within the department is creating an academic center so that we can continue to partner with our leading universities in the state who have the advanced research techniques and methodologies and new ideas 
we're partnering together, we can really push Rhode Island forward at the state level. So to get a little more into our first leading priority, addressing the social and environmental determinants of health in Rhode Island, determinants of health is a crucial term. We don't always know what that means, but we live it every day. And it's really highlighting what we get to experience. Within the Department of Health, the tremendous services that we provide with drinking water quality, with food protection, and making sure that the restaurants are safe, that the food you eat now is quality food. Environmental health, healthy homes and communities, making sure that children have safe playgrounds to play on, that there are areas to walk in communities that are safe, that there's no lead in the buildings that exist and children can develop um, well. The state health laboratories that offer services for biological sciences, env environmental sciences, and forensic sciences all contribute to addressing social and environmental determinants of health. Facilities regulations also plays an important role in making sure that our partners, our healthcare facilities, and other facilities in the state that contribute to determinants of health are up to par and providing the quality services that you want and that they want to provide as well. This also stresses the opportunity that I'm thrilled to be able to do with this governor's administration is to partner with state agencies throughout Rhode Island. Already we are engaging in conversations that are so crucial to help making health equity a common theme and an accomplishment in Rhode Island. Working with the Executive Office of Health and Human Services, Medicaid that was mentioned by Secretary Roberts, it's intrinsic in many of the services that are provided in our state. Department of Children, Youth and Family Services, Department of Corrections, Departments of Env Environmental Management, Departments of Transportation, Departments of Elderly Affairs, Emergency Management, and many, many others. These are just a few examples of how partnerships together throughout the state can really help accomplish what we need to across the spectrum of addressing health for Rhode Island. Eliminating the disparities of health in Rhode Island and promoting health equity can vary in, a, in um, a multitude of factors and mechanisms for us to address. Disparities of health do include race and ethnicity, addressing those, but that's not the only mechanism for addressing disparities. There are disparities in gender. The overdose deaths that exist in Rhode Island occur more commonly in men in our state. There are geographic disparities. Child obesity is an issue throughout our nation, in addition to just in Rhode Island. We can do better with some of the infections in our state. Environmental safety addresses disparities according to age, making sure that children have a healthy place to play. Addressing disparities by sexual orientation, knowing that our communities of men who have sex with men, are gay, are bisexual, are transgender communities, are more significantly impacted by sexually transmitted infections such as HIV. Those are disparities that we can address together. Certainly race and ethnicity, the higher rates of cancer, of diabetes and asthma that occur in our communities of color, and also being aware of disparities that occur in our dis uh, disabled populations and communities, higher rates of substance use and mental health are things that we can address together. Supporting our Health Equity Zones initiative that you see in our folder is one step of many that we can do to really promote health equity. Being here today is another way to truly advocate for that. Our third leading priority, ensuring access to quality health services for Rhode Island, including our vulnerable populations, really highlights the concept of health equity of making sure that everyone has access to quality health services. 
That's what everyone deserves, and that's what people who provide the health services want to do. So that's continuing to partner with Medicaid and the Executive Office of Health and Human Services. Helping to address our goals with health reform is important. Continuing to build relationships with our community health centers and our primary care provider community that is so crucial in our state. Being able to provide quality preventive services are important. Immunizations, maternal and child health, and addressing our long-term care community needs as well. With ensuring quality health services, a lot of the elements that go on within the Department of Health that we continue to support are important. I've mentioned the laboratories, uh, health systems development and health uh, professions, making sure that our professionals are supported and our health care institutions are supported to provide the highest quality care for all Rhode Islanders. Emergency response and disease control is a crucial opportunity and service that the Department of Health contributes to and partners with other agencies to provide to make sure that we don't have the spread of measles because most of our children are vaccinated and continuing to promote messages such as that, which are important. The services that Vital Records offers and our medical examiner's office provides are also crucial. And knowing as a department the importance of providing good customer service, that's the goal that we want to offer to our communities. To also incorporate these goals into our cross-cutting strategy of developing an academic center and an academic focus within the department helps to stimulate and activate all of our partners in the state as we join together to focus on promoting health equity. Many of the great projects and ideas, the innovations that are being created are things that we want to make sure serve all of our communities on, in Rhode Island, both our underserved, our vulnerable populations, and our populations of color as well. So what we're doing as a department is we're taking a close look at what we are currently already working on, the data we've already collected, and the experiences that our program staff and our departmental staff have already had at the community level and looking to see what are our highest priorities within this framework. And we want input from the community as well as we develop that. We're working with the employees on the front lines who are interfacing with our community partners directly. And we look forward to, together as a state, getting to a place of health equity that this summit is all about and represents. So without further ado, we want to get into the excitement of this program and move things forward. Thank you so much for having me, and we look forward to more that is to come. So enjoy the day. What I would like to do to get our day started, truly, is to provide for you the gubernatorial proclamation from our governor, Gina M. Raimondo, to highlight minority health month. It says, whereas the month of April is nationally recognized as Minority Health Month to raise awareness about health and health disparities that continue to affect racial and ethnic po populations, including African Americans, Hispanics, Latinos, Asians, Native Hawaiians, Pacific Islanders, and Native Americans, and other minority groups, Whereas, by identifying health inequities and their root causes, promoting equitable opportunities to be healthy through wellness, through providing culturally and linguistically appropriate services, through advancing health equity legislation, policies, and programs, and hosting activities and events to raise awareness, we can reduce health disparities and move towards health equity. Now, therefore, I, Gina M. Raimondo, Governor of the State of Rhode Island, 
do hereby proclaim April 2015 as Minority Health Month to promote health and wellness for all Rhode Islanders. So we want to thank you on behalf of the governor. This is tremendous work that's going to be done today, but it's not the end, it's the beginning of all that we can accomplish. So thank you again.